Hey what's going on guys, CodeMonkeyKNZ here, in this video we're going to be implementing relevant occupancy bit count lookup tables for slide and pieces. And in order to understand what exactly that means and how it works, let me reference the Magic Bit Boards article within the chess program in Wikipedia and in particular this step 3. So we need to redshift the index mapping by 64 minus n bits to create an index where n is the number of bits in the index. So by saying index, they mean uh, the mask uh, uh, of the relevant occupancy bits that that is actually forming a key. So if we have a look at these diagrams that, let's say, for a bishop on d4, we have up to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 bits, like this. But in order to... so uh, uh, the most simple and straightforward way of getting these bits is uh, what we've been doing so far. Uh, just to make use of the count bits function, but that takes time obviously and as far as we can calculate this uh, relevant occupancy bit count uh, For every single square on a chessboard. It's uh, much better to create this pre-calculated uh, relevant occupancy bit lookup tables uh, in order to boost the performance because uh, we won't need to be doing really lots of a bit counting in this case and we can just reference the number of relevant occupancy bits uh, on a target given square just by a simple lookup. So this is the exact topic that uh, 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 this is the, the, the <laughs> this is the exact thing that we're supposed to be implemented within this video so that's the topic of it so without further ado let's actually start writing some code. So uh, I would like to start with opening the terminal in the current working directory and by simply type, type in make debug and if it compiles and want to run the bbc binary executable file here okay and uh yeah it just goes from the previous version so we don't really need to print occupancies anymore so i would just get rid of all of this stuff and here mm, i will i will write some temporary code now uh that i that i would delete later on so i'm not going to be providing that much commentaries as always but uh i would be talking along the way so we need our very basic loop over the ranks and files just like we did when we were printing bitboard so we can simply say for int rank equals to zero rank is less than eight and rank plus plus and exactly the same for the false, just like we've been doing before really numerous times. So foul and foul and foul here. And let's also initialize our square that will be equal as always like rank multiplied by eight plus foul. And now uh, we actually need to. Um, well, uh, I'll probably probably first I will just print this. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll just print the content of this arrays that we're supposed to be initializing, and later on I'll, I will define some variables. Well, sorry guys, just my cats uh, fighting around here. Sorry for that. Okay, so um, we simply need to print f. And I want to print the decimal formatting specifier here. And here we need to call the count bits function and call our. Let's start with the bishop. So mask, mask bishop attacks and providing the square as an argument. So we want to be masking bishop attacks for all the squares available and counting bits. And this number is the exact number uh, that we need in order to initialize our relevant occupancy bits uh, lookup tables. Okay, and don't forget to say print f and the new line to pretty print this in a table mode. So let's have a look at the output here. Okay, so these are the exact numbers. Uh, I will now. Oh, just some activity on my channel. Thanks, guys. Just respond respond to this later on uh, just uh, one more little little thing here I need to, to add a comma I'm sorry uh, comma save run okay and now just 
a few explanations regarding uh, how this works actually, actually, and what does it represent. So let's consider this is the chessboard, like eight to eight squares. So where this six comes from? You see, like we have one, two, three, four, five, six relevant occupancy bits. So uh, I'm not counting the one on the board edge. So when we were implementing the mass bishop attacks and mass crook attacks, I've been explaining this in great details. Now let's consider right over in here. We have only so if bishop is here on uh, on b8, we have only one, two, three, four, five, and that's it. And this that's why we have this five here. And so on. So nine here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So uh, we have the number of relevant occupancy bit count for every single square. And I, I can just uh, I can just simply or probably just to make it a little bit uh, easier to format. I want to uh, I would bring this in this like way and copy. And now let's scroll up. Uh, where the attacks actually, where the attack section begins, and right over in here, I want to create the, I want to, I want to define the array uh, for our uh, relevant, uh, relevant occupancy uh, bit count for every square on board. And let's go. So this would be the type of integer, and actually this would be the constant. So con const const integer. Uh, let's call this bishop relevant bits like this, and up to sixty-four. And here I just paste these values that we've just generated here okay save so let's make sure it still compiles okay now we need exactly the same array but for our rooks so if we just ask to print the mask rook attacks instead we'll have exactly the same uh, idea but for for rook attack so let's consider we have a rook here we have one two three four five six plus six equals to twelve relevant occupancy bits and here say we have only one two three four five one two three four five six six plus five equals equals eleven so that's the reason why here we have eleven and so on so that's that's kind of the idea here and now let me just grab this array as well and define rook uh, relevant bits array next to the bishop relevant bits array so uh, like this okay so So here we have a bishop, and here we have a rook relevant uh, relevant occupancy bit count for every square on board. So int rook relevant bits. Yeah, this is kind of it. So let me just try to compile and run this again. Yeah. So this is this is awesome. Okay guys, so this is it for this video, and um, I was thinking like uh, which which path to consider regarding generating magic numbers uh, that would be serving as the multipliers for our indexes to obtain, uh, to initialize uh, slide and piece uh, attack tables, and uh, I was I was choosing between using already pre-calculated -pre magic numbers that obviously I already have but uh, and on the other way I was I was thinking about making a video on actually how to generate those numbers and as far as uh, we have like almost all the functions needed for that apart from pseudo random move generator uh, pseudo random number generator uh, I thought that actually it would be even better to show the process of generating those magic numbers because 
it, at very least it would help to understand how this magic uh, how this entire magic bit board idea actually works and the only problem I was facing actually that the implementation I was using was relying on the POSIX like operating systems random function within the standard library stdlib.h header uh, defining the std uh, uh, std uh, stdlib.h library but uh sorry not this how, how oh my god uh, I forgot how the standard library name uh, how is that called well, forget that doesn't matter really so the idea is that uh, I didn't really want to create the code that would run only on Linux or Mac OS, but also some code that would run on Windows as well so this morning uh, I've been working on altering that uh, uh, that uh, magic number generator and I came up with quite a pretty simple implementation at the very end so I decided to use the so-called XOR shift method to generate pseudo random num numbers and by simply defining a constant um, before starting generating those uh, random num pseudo random numbers uh, uh, I just uh, well I, I was testing this with different constants and they all kind of working quite pretty nicely, but to make hundred percent hundred percent sure that it, it would oh it would uh, work for sure, uh, I will I would be using the very first uh, number generated by my random function uh, within the standard library on on my Linux system. So that would be just the integer constant like like that. But obviously you you can try to change that with randomly type uh, by hands uh, whatever sort of a constant integer and that still should work uh, just generating slightly different magic numbers and there are really lots of discussions regarding uh, optimizing the process of generating random num uh, of generating uh, uh, magic numbers uh, and so on but I just want to show the the bare gist behind this the, the pure concept of the trial and error method involved in generating those numbers so uh, I would be using that constant and what, what, one of the other ideas is that uh, when we will implement this pseudo-random uh, pseudo uh, number generator uh, the idea would be to generate the same pseudo-random uh, numbers uh, regardless of operating system processor type and so on so uh, the idea is to have uh, 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 at the very end we will have magic numbers absolutely the same generated absolutely the same so we'll have the same magic numbers regardless of what computer they are generated on so that's quite pretty important stuff here so in the next few videos uh, uh, first I was I was thinking like already to write a function to actually initialize our slatter piece, uh, piece uh, slatter piece attack arrays but then I thought like uh, as far as uh, I, I found some sort of a cross-platform solution. Uh, it would be better to actually create this pseudo-random num uh, uh, pseudo num number generator and probably we'll make use of it further on, uh, maybe within the transposition table, maybe. Well, I'm not sure at this moment at least. But anyway, uh, it, it, might, it might make great sense basically and it's really, it's incredibly easy to implement overall. So, uh, just uh, uh, I just want want you guys to be a little bit patient to wait until this random number generation uh, videos would actually end up, and then we'll write the function to actually using the trial and error method trying to generate this magic numbers for magic bit boards, and then we'll finally initialize our slide and attack pieces. So. This is it from my side. Uh, thanks for watching this video. Thanks for listening to what I'm talking about here. Uh, I really appreciate your attention to my work, guys. This really means a lot to me, and I really, I'm, I'm very great, grateful to you guys. So, hope to see you next video. Until then, and take care.